The year is 1905. A woman with a stern face and a tattered, ratty black dress passes you on the street. As she passes by, you notice a foul smell, and you notice the dress that she's wearing has little spots of green mold. You realize at once who this woman is, and it sends a chill down your spine. Despite her clothes and her dirty appearance, this woman is the richest woman in the world. And she just stopped to pick up a penny off the street that somebody had dropped in the mud. Her reputation is confirmed before your very eyes, the woman that the Guinness Book of World Records called the greatest miser. So focused on saving money that she even refused to wash the entire dress, which was the only one that she owned. Instead, she would only wash the hem, which was the part she said got dirty in order to save money. But somehow she had created for herself a massive fortune totaling approximately $5 billion in today's money. So who is this woman who is able to become so staggeringly wealthy despite her reputation and despite her odd habits? And more importantly, what can we learn from her? This is the untold story of Hetty Green, the witch of Wall Street who is the greatest investor you have never heard of. Hetty Green was born in 1834. She was born to an extremely wealthy family who was a whaling family. In addition to being the richest whaling family in Massachusetts, they were also Quakers. By the time she was two years old, she was sent to live with her grandfather, where she picked up the habits and the practices of business and reading about investments. She would read financial papers to her father by the time she was six years old. And when she was 13, she was already the family bookkeeper. And here we find the first lesson from Hetty Green's life is that children are generally going to become what they're trained to be, not what they're told to be. In fact, for pretty much Hetty Green's entire early life, people were telling her to be a normal woman. She attended finishing schools. She rejected dressing well and keeping up her appearances, despite everything that her mother and her aunt tried to tell her to do. They were afraid that somebody wealthy like her would never be able to attract some man to marry her if she did not present herself as a typical rich woman. In fact, when she was 20 years old, she moved to New York City because her aunt was pressuring her to go find a husband. But instead, she decided to spend that time listening to what the men said on Wall Street, talking about investments and finances. She had been given a $1,200 budget for that trip. She only spent 200 and invested the rest in bonds. So it's no debate that Hetty Green was given a winning hand from a young age, but it's not so much about what you're given as much as it is what you do with it. That's why 70% of people who win the lottery are broke within five years, showing that her early training on how to manage money well is what caused her to have so much success later on. Throughout her early career, she bucked the trends and made waves by being a contrarian in more ways than one. Number one, she was a woman, and that was extremely rare for a woman to be in business, to be working by herself, and to be beating all the men at their own game, especially at that time. But she was a contrarian with her investing as well as one of the earliest known value investors with the same investing philosophy that has made people like Warren Buffett so wealthy. And this is the second piece that we can learn from Hetty Green's life is to buy the things that are hated and sell the things that are loved. In her own words, she said, I buy when things are low and nobody wants them. I keep them until they go up and people are crazy to get them. That is, I believe, the secret to all business. She made her career investing in boring businesses and boring assets that people just didn't want anymore. Things like Civil War bonds, railroad stocks, mortgage bonds, and even greenbacks. If you aren't aware, greenbacks were the paper money that the American government issued to pay for the Civil War. These greenbacks declined in value due to the inflation that happened from overprinting and Hetty Green saw an opportunity to buy. Her hunch was correct because in 1875, the American government backed greenbacks with gold again, shooting the value of those greenbacks right back up. But this wasn't just a hunch. This was something that she had researched in terms of 
what the supply of the greenbacks were and the situation that the American government was in, financially speaking, and what the American government would have to do to the greenbacks in order to restore price stability. It was not a guess, it was an educated forecast. And this brings us to the next lesson that we can learn from Hetty Green's life, the Witch of Wall Street. Look well into your investments. In her own words, she said, before deciding on any investment, I seek out all information about it. This investing wisdom is found all over the place with successful investors, everywhere from the Bible to Warren Buffett saying that he only invests in things that he knows really well. Even if something may go up in the future, if he doesn't understand it, he won't touch it. Around this time, Hetty Green was starting to be called the queen of Wall Street. She was picking up a huge reputation for being able to predict panics, to be able to see things coming, to buy things when they were low in some ability to forecast the future about them going back up and getting out of things before they crashed. These skills would serve investors today extremely well considering the financial calamity, the period of time that Hetty Green lived through. She was born in 1834, so she lived through the Civil War, the inflation that occurred as a result, the banking panics at the end of the 1800s, the panic of 1907, the creation of the Federal Reserve, the creation of the income tax, and with her children as well, living through the Forgotten Depression and the Great Depression. Being able to keep your wealth through all of that is something to write about, let alone creating the largest fortune on earth as a woman. And I keep on emphasizing that she was a woman because at that time, there really were no women doing what she was doing. Consistently going against the crowd in almost every area of her life is what led her to have so much success. You see, Hetty Green lived during the Gilded Age. This was a time of excess where people spent money on luxuries and lavish things that only the richest of the rich could afford. Everybody wanted to look wealthy and spend the money on all the brand new luxuries that the world had to offer. But Hetty Green's thrift, her frugalness, her miserliness even was unparalleled. After her husband died and she became a widow, she wore one black dress for the rest of her life. And once it got to the point where it could not be repaired anymore, she would buy one more black dress and only wear that. It got to the point where rumors suggested she didn't even wash the dress fully. She would only wash the hem because she thought that was the only part that would get dirty. The dress would turn slightly green from mold and people said she smelled and even refused to wash her hands and the dirt grew under her fingernails. And this was when her reputation and rumors started changing and people instead started calling her the Witch of Wall Street, calling her a ruthless businesswoman. She predicted the panic of 1907, saying that there is too much excess, seeing what was going on in the financial world, saying we are only going to be able to have a big crash after this. This is not sustainable. And she built a large cash position waiting to pounce on the deals. Because she was one of the only ones who saw it coming and was one of the only ones prepared with cash, she was able to lend to anybody that needed the cash from the panic. This included New York City. Hetty Green, as an individual, was able to be the one to provide a loan to an entire city to keep the city from going under. Doing deals like this were what earned her reputation of being a ruthless business person, taking advantage of people and even people calling her a loan shark. But on the other hand, if she hadn't prepared, who would have been there to rescue everybody that needed saving when the time came? And this is where we get to the next lesson from Hetty Green's life is that luck is where preparedness and opportunity meet. It is evident that there were many times in Hetty Green's life where she experienced some very lucky circumstances, everything from her upbringing to the various circumstances that she found herself in, being able to make loans and make investments. But many of those opportunities also made themselves available to many other people she was one of the only ones who was prepared to take advantage of it though. And a lot of this actually does come down to the fact that she was so frugal and very rarely spent any money at all. She was able to make these safe investments, never needed to worry about the high risk investments to produce a high reward that she needed for her living expenses. She knew that if everything went wrong, then she lost all of her money, she could still live on a very small amount of money. She had a huge 
margin of safety, and that allowed her to invest with logic and reason rather than with fear and emotion. Doing so also allowed her to be able to give away a large portion of her great fortune. And despite the reputation that she earned as being the world's greatest miser, she was a secret philanthropist. When you see a billionaire today or a large corporation bragging and releasing press releases and talking about how much money they've given away or what charities they've donated to, it just doesn't rub you the right way. Because were you giving in order to help that person out, that charity out, that organization out who is in need? Or since you're telling everybody about it, was there actually an different motive in mind. And Hetty Green was the exact opposite. She believed in secret charity. And she was so successful at it that many people don't even realize she was a philanthropist. Which leads us to the next lesson we can learn from Hetty Green, that it is better to give in secret than to give in public. Because her actions funded and supported and helped carry on people who needed help paying their bills. She donated directly to families, especially after the panic of 1907. She loaned money at below market interest rates to organizations and businesses that were in desperate need of cash. She funded universities, schools, hospitals, and many other charities. And it was those actions that had the results she was looking for. She didn't have to care about her reputation because it's not about who you are, who people think you are, what you've been given, or your circumstances. It's all just about the results, and the results come from actions alone. Hetty Green ended up dying in 1916, and by the time of her death, she was worth an estimated 200 million, which in today's dollars is about 5 billion, making her at the time the richest woman in the world, earning her another title of the Wizard of Finance. Her fortune was passed on to her two kids, Ned and Sylvia, who were able to preserve it through, again, the Forgotten Depression and the Great Depression, something that most kids who inherit large sums of wealth are not able to do because they have not been trained how to handle money. Though her reputation went down in history as the Witch of Wall Street, again, the actions, the things that really mattered were how she built her wealth and what she did with it once she was gone. When her son Ned died, his fortune ended up going to MIT and it funded many of their experiments, including one of the prototypes for a particle accelerator. And her daughter Sylvia, when she died, most of her $200 million net worth when she died was donated to charities, hospitals, schools, universities, and churches. A very short list of some of the charities and organizations that received some of this massive wealth that Hetty Green had created were the American Red Cross, Columbia University, the Fire Department's Honor Emergency Fund in New York, the Girl Scouts of America, Harvard College, the Institute for the Crippled and the Disabled, Johns Hopkins University, MIT, Yale, and many churches. And in a fitting tribute to Hetty Green's life, the New York Times, and a few days after she had passed away, the New York Times wrote a tribute to Hetty Green, correcting misconceptions about the so-called Witch of Wall Street. It was the fact that Mrs. Green was a woman that made her career the subject of endless curiosity, comment, and astonishment. Her habits were the legacy of her New England ancestors, who had the best of reasons for knowing the value of money, for never wasting it, and for risking it only when their shrewd minds saw an approach to certainty of profit. Though something of hardness was ascribed to her, that she harmed any is not recorded, and victims of ruthlessness are usually audible. That there are a few like her is not a cause of regret. That there are many less commendable is one. In today's financial climate, when we are worrying about bank failures, inflation, deflationary death spiral, hyperinflation, different global allegiances taking place, superpowers rising and falling, global trade changing, new advancements in technology, new fields of employment opening up, opportunities for some people to get rich, and forces that are causing some people to become poor. We can find a lot of similarities throughout the time that Hetty Green lived through. Civil war, inflation, rising and falling global powers, banking collapses, banking panics, stock market crashes, new global orders, centralization with the creation of the Federal Reserve. And despite that, she was able to use sound, ancient investing wisdom and principles to create the largest fortune that a woman had ever created in history. And we would do well to follow in the footsteps of the Witch of Wall Street. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.